everyone. Today I thought I'd show you how I paint silver and gold and my models are makeup caps. When I was an art teacher, my students assumed that the way to make something look like metal was to coat it with a solid layer of metallic paint. I'm painting a cylinder with copper paint here, but really all that does is create a sparkly brown log. Unfortunately, painting realistic metal is not that simple. First, you need to change the way you see metal. It acts as a mirror for colors, highlights, and shadows. To start, I'll draw a couple of cylinders lightly with a pencil, just two straight lines and a couple of curves. Then I'm going to go in there and outline shapes I see, such as white areas or shadows. I'm looking at photos I took of the silver and gold caps, and they're in similar positions. I wanted to show you the differences between the two colors. I can draw some of the lines with a ruler, but the others are curves. Next, I'm using masking fluid to protect the brightest areas on both caps. They show up as white glares in the photos. Once that's dry, it's time to paint, and I'm working from light to dark here. The silver cap involves a lot of grayish colors with no real names, and a lot of them involve me mixing three or more colors. Accurate color mixing is hard and might take you a few tries. Always look at what you're mixing and ask yourself, what does this color need? What does this color have too much of? To correct a color, I add a bit of its opposite or complement. You can learn more about complementary colors in the video I've linked to below. But in the simplest terms, if something is too blue, I'll add orange. If it's too yellow, I'll add purple. And if it's too red, I'll add green and vice versa. While I was talking, you can see that I started to work on the gold cap. See how the bottom part is tinged with yellow while the silver cap is bluish? I photographed the caps on white paper, so what you're seeing there is a pale reflection of silver and gold. The rest of the caps are reflecting my lights, the ceiling, and other parts of the room. I've mixed a dark blue, which is Prussian blue, with some sepia and purple, and that's going on the center of the silver cap. This is the dark ceiling of my room, and you can see where the masking fluid is protecting the highlights. While that's damp, I'm adding a more intense version of my dark color. Now it's time to do the same thing with the gold cap. It's a similarly dark color, but this is more of a dark golden brown. I've used yellow, burnt sienna, and some purple. I think I also added a bit of my dark silver color. There are lots of different ways to arrive at a color like this. I saw a little bit of turquoise at the end of that big glare, so I dropped that in too. I let everything dry and I've just removed the masking fluid. Time to switch brushes. My little number one round brush is slightly wet and I'm using the water to soften edges and correct colors. You can do a lot of things with just water on your brush and my favorite thing is lifting colors to create highlights. Also I feel more in control over tiny details when I'm using this small brush. Along the edge of the middle glare, I'm adding some yellow and yellow-orange while keeping most of the white. Lots of very skinny lines are happening between the ceiling and the paper reflection, and they're in a variety of colors from pink to blue to gold to purple. I'll let that dry and do similar things with the silver cap now. I'll remove the masking fluid and work on softening those edges. Even though this is silver, it's still able to reflect warm colors. This glare is from a yellow lamp that I have to my left, and it gets the same golden outline that the other cap has. Next, I'll paint that busy area between the paper and the ceiling reflections. When I took those photos, I tried to keep my own hands and camera out of the way so they wouldn't show up on the caps, but sometimes that's unavoidable, and I've painted a few pictures of my own hands and even my face reflected in metal before. The top glares have blue and purplish edges on their borders. Can you see now how painting metal needs to involve so much more than one flat metallic color to look convincing? Back on the gold cap, I'm ready to hit it with the darkest colors, a mixture of purple, sepia, and Prussian blue. 
And this step really brings it all together and makes me think, yeah, this is starting to be gold now. I'm going over colors that already seem pretty dark, but the super dark color gives the cap some real depth. Every painting I work on tends to include a step that makes me feel like I'm a magician, and this is that step, and it's not that hard. Then there are a few finishing touches. Your surface can make a world of difference in the way your metal looks. I've chosen white, but what if I put these on a green surface? See how it affects the bottom third and that top edge? Back to finish the silver cap. Again, I'm mixing a super dark blue with purple and sepia, and I'll paint it on everything that looks black to me. I always try to have dark, medium, and light values when I paint, and now both caps have all those values, so they appear more finished and three-dimensional, and they even look shinier. Finally, here are some finishing touches. I'm adding more intense blues and dark gold colors along the glares, and that lower edge is getting some extra attention. I'd say those look better than that sparkly brown log, and that's how I paint things that look like metal. If you'd like some more painting tips from me, I've created a couple of instructional watercolor pads with videos from Strathmore that can help you learn the basics. See the link below. Thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe.